Welcome to the developer walkthrough of the game Andromeda Rebirth of Humanity. This video is a step-by-step -step walkthrough starting from immediately after creating a new corporation and viewing the intro. There's not a lot of hand-holding in this game, so after the intro you'll be immediately dropped into the sandbox universe, staring at your new home planet with the freedom to do pretty much anything you want with no restrictions. So where should you start? The first thing I would direct anyone to when first starting the game is the missions screen which you get to by going to my corporation and missions. Missions might not be the best name for them. Most of them are more like a quick start guide. Most of the beginning missions will tell you what building you should build. Upon completion it will give you the resources to build the next logical building. Doing the missions in order will basically end up in the same place as where I'm going to go with this walkthrough. One thing I should note is that the order I do things in this walkthrough is just one of many possible ways to start the game, and it's probably not a big deal if you do something different. It's not like you need to do everything perfectly at the start or you have to start over. You can always come back later and delete stuff and rebuild. The amount of resources and early building costs will be trivial later, and you can't really build a perfect setup from the start anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you mess up and waste all your resources on something and get yourself stuck, you can usually get unstuck by buying the resources you need to progress from players on the bazaar. If you waste all your credits, it's usually possible to get it back by fighting NPC fleets. One thing that can knock you back is getting your fleet wiped and needing resources to repair them, so I'd advise only attacking NPC fleets with lower combat power than yours to avoid losses until you know what you're doing. Okay, with that out of the way, let's start building some infrastructure on the starting planet. And I'll try to explain how it all works and why I'm building stuff the way I am. The starting planet is a highly habitable planet and the perfect place to house your starting workers and tourists. Generally, we want to use habitable planets for habitats and resorts, and less habitable planets for industry or storage. Although sometimes it may be necessary to put an industry building on a habitable planet to get something we need early on. Kind of a waste of a slot long term, but not a huge deal. We can remove it once it's served its purpose. I recommend building enough habitats and resorts to house your workers and tourists that you start with, but you don't really need to provide a bunch of excess habitats or tourist space yet. Most sectors or buildings also require power, so we're going to need to build a solar array. I recommend building it on the slot with the sun and the plus icon. That means that that slot has additional sunlight and makes solar arrays work better. So I'm building a solar array there. And that also completed a mission. Another thing we're going to need is water. So we can go over here to this water plus slot and build a water harvester. And now those are building. You'll notice on the planet stats panel on the right that there is a tracker for how much water and electricity the planet has. With water, each harvester adds 50,000 storage for water. Ideally, you just want to avoid the water and storage going down to zero, which would negatively affect standard of living, which is this value here, and may cause workers or tourists to begin to leave the planet. One water harvester should be enough for quite a while, so it shouldn't be a big issue. With electricity, the number on the left is how many megawatts of power the planet is using, and the number on the right is how many megawatts of power the planet is generating. If the number on the left is ever higher than the number on the right, buildings will begin to shut down from lack of power. If we open the People tab, we can see that we have 40 million workers, and the zero on the right means that we have zero habitat space. There is a one hour window on new accounts where no one will leave due to lack of housing. So we just want to make sure there is enough habitat and tourist space to house our starting population before that one hour window expires. Each habitat houses 40 million, so to house our starting 40 po million population, we only need to have one habitat for now. So I'm going to go ahead and build a habitat on this slot with the palm trees and the plus. That means that this slot has scenery and it gives a boost to buildings like resorts and habitats. Since we have 60 million tourists, we will need to build two resorts to house those. So I'll build two resorts on slots of scenery just like I did with the habitats. Another mission complete. Alright, 
so those are building. If I go back to the planet stats screen, you'll notice that the electricity used has gone up. It's going up by 5 because of this habitat. Habitats and resorts don't draw a lot of electricity, so one solar array will be more than enough for quite a while on this planet. We now have our starting planet set up to support our workers and tourists that we started with indefinitely, and they shouldn't start leaving for any reason. When you have excess habitat and resort space available, and water and electricity provided, the worker and tourist populations should start to grow. But you don't really want to focus on growing your worker and tourist populations early on, and I'll explain why. Workers fill jobs and keep other sectors such as mines and resorts operating, and tourists generate revenue that goes straight towards military budget to pay for ships and land unit upkeep. Workers will cost wages even if they aren't working, so you only want as many as there are jobs to fill. You start with enough workers to run quite a few sectors, so we don't really need any more workers yet. Tourists don't actually generate any revenue, they just allow you to upkeep more ships, and the starting ships you get for free have free upkeep, so tourism shouldn't really be your focus early on either. Once you have habitats and resorts operating on your starter planet, the next focus early on should be expanding to a second planet and mining and refining metals, and getting as many industries passively producing resources as we can. To colonize a second planet in your starting system, we're going to need a fleet. To create a fleet, open the My Corp screen, go to Corp Assets, and down here at the bottom right, there's a Create New Fleet button. You click that and enter a name. This will create an empty fleet that we can add ships to. Open the Fleet Stats screen by clicking on the fleet that we just made, and click the Add button on one of the ship slots to add a ship to that slot. What slot you put a ship in makes a small difference. The four slots on the left are in the front row and deal 10% more damage and take 10% more damage. The four slots on the right are in the back row and take 10% less damage and deal 10% less damage. The four slots in the middle have no bonuses. So now I'm going to click on the Add button and click on a ship to add it. Or click on this Add to Fleet button and that completed a mission and added another ship to our inventory and gave us a module. So let's go ahead and add that ship that we just got from completing that mission as well. While we're in here we should use the select fleet button to select this fleet so that it's the one being actively used when we go to attack NPCs. Before we use this fleet we should equip the modules that we started out with to optimize their damage output and stats. To do that we click on one of the ships to open the ship stat screen and then we click up one of these slots on the bottom and then we click whatever weapon we want to put into that slot and now it's equipped and that completed another mission and gave us another module. So we go ahead and click on this slot and put shield generator in there and then on the left there's these tabs that open your different categories of modules. Since we got that armor module we have one armor module in that slot equip that one too. With all of our modules equipped to the ships and the fleet selected we can start looking for a second planet to colonize. So we can close this out. You can scroll between planets with the right and left arrows on the screen. You can also jump to a planet by clicking on it directly. The other way to get around is to click on the zoom out button at the top right of the main screen to open the solar system view mode. From here you can click on any planet you want or click on the star to zoom into it. The first planet I recommend colonizing is the pinkish amarelled type planet. It isn't very habitable but it has a lot of the low tier metals that we're going to need early on. There are usually always pirates or some other NPC fleet in orbit around every planet, so we'll have to clear those with our fleet before we can colonize the planet. Our fleet isn't quite strong enough to beat this fleet easily, so let's see if we can increase our fleet strength a little bit. We can view our fleet that we have selected by clicking this magnifying glass icon at the top. 
we got another ship from completing one of the missions, so let's add that to the slot in the back, since it's a frigate, and frigates are the tanks of this game. And let's also remove these defensive modules from this ship, and put them on this ship, and that'll make it tank a little better. Alright, we should be able to take that fleet now. Our combat power is higher than theirs. Now that the NPC fleet is out of the way, we can put our fleet in orbit and colonize this planet. It needs a name. Let's use the random number generator name. And that uses one of our colony ships to colonize the planet. And it also completes another mission. With the second planet colonized, before turning it into an industrial and storage hub, let's get the fleet busy doing something that can be going in the background while we build stuff on the new planet. Click on the star map icon to open the star map. Before we jump to another star, we need to fuel the fleet with antimatter, which I guess I already did, but you click this blue nozzle at the bottom to refuel it. The star with the teal wormhole on the star map is the entry point star that we can jump to from anywhere, including our starter system. I want to get our fleet exploring the star with the teal wormhole either by double clicking on it or clicking on it to select it and then clicking the jump fleet button and that'll get our fleet exploring that star it takes a little bit so that's why we're gonna have that going while we do this on our planet with the second planet selected we're gonna add some industry buildings let's start with a mine and get it mining iron ore before building a mine or any other building that extracts resources from the planet, we're going to want to pick a planet slot that has resources available to mine. Oh, exploration is complete. In this case we want iron ore. You can view the resources on a planet slot by clicking the little magnifying glass icon above the building slot. And that'll show you how many resources this slot has. and we can see that most of these slots have iron ore. Oh, and you might notice that there's two different values for iron ore, surface and deep. Surface ore is mined 25% faster than deep ore. A faster way of finding a slot with the appropriate resources is to check if the planet has a slot specialty with a resource type that we are interested in, denoted by a small resource icon underneath the planet slot icon. Clicking on a planet slot with a slot specialty will show you what kind of slot specialty it has. So this says iron rich volcano so that means that it gives more iron ore. Since this planet slot has an iron rich volcano it will always have an abundance of iron ore and it will gradually refill iron ore over time. So putting an iron ore mine on the slot will effectively make it mine indefinitely. Whereas most planet slots it would run out of surface and deep ore eventually and stop producing. Okay let's go ahead and put a mine on the slot. and that completed another mission. This mine's also going to need power, but industry buildings don't usually need water, with a few exceptions. So let's see if we have a solar... Yes, we do have a solar bonus slot on this one, so this one has extreme sunlight slot specialty, so we'll go ahead and put a solar panel on this one. And we're also going to need a refinery. So let's find a slot that does not have one of these ore specialties, since the refinery would not benefit from that at all, and put a refinery on it. And get another mission complete. Another thing that we're going to want at some point is storage. So let's go ahead and put one of those down. It shouldn't actually be an issue yet, but if we hit the storage limit, our buildings will stop producing resources, so we really don't want that to happen. Let me show you where storage is. So if you click on the storage button on the main screen, it brings up this, and this is where your storage you used is shown. We're using 15,063 out of 40,000, so we have quite a bit of space left. Okay, so now that these buildings are done, the mine, the refinery, and the solar array, you can see that we're 
producing steel bars, 7.6 per minute. And if you click on the mine, you see down here at the bottom, it'll show you how many ores there are left on the slot. So there's 6,926. So if you click on this, it'll actually show you what ores of every type are on the slot. And you can scroll down and there's more. But some ore you need to have diamond drill unlocked, which is this right here. But we're just going to leave this one on iron ore. If we open up our storage now, we should also see that our steel bars are going up slowly. And these will also continue to go up even if you're logged out. Offline income works for two hours offline. One thing that's important to keep in mind is that storage is global. So when a mine on this planet mines iron ore, it adds it to our global storage, which is available anywhere in the universe. So we could just as easily refine all of this ore that we're mining on this planet on any other planet, and it would be just as fast. Let's add a few more mines and refineries to this planet. Every planet gets 12 slots on the ground, plus 6 slots of orbital buildings. So you don't really have a ton of slots to work with on each planet. It's really set up so that it doesn't take forever to set up each planet, because you can lose planets during PvP. Okay, so I just built another mine on this copper slot, so let's set this one to mine copper ore. And I built another refinery. Let's go ahead and skip that with time crystals. And let's set this one to refine copper bars. Refineries refine quite a bit faster than mines. You could probably have two mines for every one refinery, but we're not going to do that for now. Let's add one more mine, doing lead. We could also change these to anything else. We don't have to use what the slot specialty is. That's just what would be ideal for them to be set to. Okay, so now we have three mines. One's mining iron, one's mining copper, and one's mining lead. And then we have three refineries refining those three ores. So now we're starting to run into worker shortages. So let's go back to our starter planet by clicking this button in the middle. Let's go ahead and find a scenery slot and add another habitat. Should go back to the civil tab, build habitat. Let's go ahead and skip that for the sake of this tutorial. And if we open up the planet people screen, we now have 80 million space for workers. So this worker uh, number on the front should start to go up. But it goes up slowly over time. So we can just leave that alone for now. One thing we can do to speed up our worker growth is go to an empty slot that doesn't have a slot specialty and build a medical facility on it. This will also complete another mission. So that mission complete, but I'm not going to rush that building. So that should make growth speed up as soon as it finishes. And you can see that we've already gained 0.9 million workers. So we'll just let that go up. Okay, let's revert back to the mission screen to see what we should do next. So we did the mine, the refinery. The next one on the list is quarry. So let's see if we can find some quartz to put a quarry on. It would be nice if we could find some or uh, some quartz on this planet, since we don't want to waste our habitable slots on quartz mines. But I'm not actually sure if this planet will have quartz. Let's check this slot here. Oh, so there are some quartz on this slot, so let's go ahead and put a quarry there. We won't really need that water bonus. Trying to basically cover the least useful slot with that. And that one would also be a good one to cover up because we don't really need that one either. So let's find quarry on here. And that finished another mission. Let's put 
a if we go back to this the next one was glass factory so let's put a glass factory on this other slot here and basically we just want to get production of as many resources as we can so that gave us another mission complete and gave us a module getting kind of low on slots here we have this slot and this slot that has a slot blocker on it so I guess I should probably explain slot blockers. So these are like natural res or natural phenomena that keep you from using this slot. And they cost a small amount of resources to get rid of. So like that costs 200 tungsten. Our starter planet probably has some too. Let me find that. So this one has this dinosaur. So you got to use 200 meat to free up the slot so you can build on it. That's what those are. Uh, to get rid of it, you just click the demolish button. We can try and go ahead and do that. So, 200 meat deducted to feed the hungry dinosaurs so they stop eating people. This plan is perfectly sound, I assure you. And we just leave that going, and that slot will be cleared in two minutes. Uh, let's look back at the mission screen again. So next is algae farm and biomass printer on the mission screen. So for that, we're going to need a planet with water. It might be a good idea to colonize a third planet here. Let's check what our fleet's looking like. Oh, we got a bunch of colony ships. Let's put all those colony ships in the back row. Well, we're not in the right solar system. Okay, now it's in the right solar system. So let's add these ships. see if we have any modules we can equip. So we do have one, that one. So that one can go here. And let's go out to a planet that has water available. That one's got too strong of a fleet. That one does too. That doesn't look like it has much water. That one's too strong. That one's too strong. Well, this looks perfect. It's only got 220 and it should have water. So this looks like a good candidate for our second planet. Or actually this is our third planet. So the algae farm requires water. So we're going to need to build solar array and water and then an algae farm. So we'll go ahead and put a water harvester on this water slot. Oh yeah, I forgot to even colonize it. Go ahead and clear these NPCs real quick. In the beginning, you don't really have much that you can control in battles because you don't have nuke ships or repair ships, just this one ship. Battles get a lot more interesting once you start getting ships that you can actually control. Because colony ships and fighters are very boring. Oh yeah, and there's these cargo crates that float around planets so you can click on if you see them. That's what I just did there. Alright, so that planet no longer has NPCs. Let's, let's see, we're going to have to enter orbit first and then click colonize. And it needs a name. Oh, we need a research. So, to do research, you just open my corpse screen, click the research button, and then click on whatever research you want. In this case we need planetary control to increase how many planets we can have and we have plenty of resources for that. So go ahead and do that and now we can have another planet. So that used to colonize or a colony ship from the inventory to colonize the planet and now it's ours. So back to what I was going to do. Put a water harvester here. Is there an algae slot on this planet by any chance? Nope. So we'll just go ahead and put it on the least useful slot, which might be... Boy, they're all pretty good. Maybe this one. We probably don't need that much wine. So algae farm is here. 
since this planet is relatively habitable, we might also want to use these other habitat or slots for habitats and resorts. So that's why I'm trying to keep those open. I'm going to go ahead and do the algae or the biomass printer on this slot. All right, that's another mission done. And you can keep going down the missions list doing those, and eventually you'll have all the starting buildings that you need. So the next one's gas extractor. I wonder if this planet has any gas on these slots. So it has oxygen and helium-3. I'm going to need to research which one I should go for first. Okay, so rather than pick from just having oxygen and helium-3, there's actually a better option. If I go to the starting planet, these slots have oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen, which are the ones that you're going to need early. Helium-3 is really only good for the fusion reactor, which we won't get for quite a while. So I think it would be more future-proof to put the gas extractor on the starting planet with all three types of gas. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now I don't have to worry about not having one of these gases at some point since I have all three of them available. I'm going to leave it on hydrogen for now. Whenever I need something, I can just set it to mine that. Let's go back to that other planet. So, I never did build a solar array on these. Let's go ahead and do that. Every once in a while you kind of have to revisit your old planets too, to see if everything's still set up right. And there's no things like this missing electricity. So, where's our solar array on this planet? So, we could either upgrade this which is probably the best way of doing it, or we could add another solar array to get our power up to the right amount. I think I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade it with one of these. And let's see if that is enough to get this building powered. It looks like it was, because it, yeah, it's no longer underpowered. So you can just keep upgrading your power plants as you need more power. You don't really need to upgrade them until you run into an issue. Let's see how we're looking on workers. So it looks like we're maxed out again at 80. We have 75 employed. I'm going to go ahead and add another habitat. We could also upgrade our existing habitats too, but you get a lot better bang for your buck by building a new habitat than you do upgrading your existing ones. So it's generally advisable to fill all of your empty slots before you start upgrading. Alright, so the last thing I'm going to cover in this episode of the tutorial is the gem harvester. After that, it gets into supercomputer and university and more advanced stuff, so I think the gem harvester is a good place to stop. So let's find a slot with gems. Let's see if this slot has gems, and it does. So I'm going to go ahead and put a gem harvester on this slot. And that mission complete. Go ahead and skip that. So now we can mine any of these. Diamond is generally one you want to get early because the research for planet count requires diamonds. So you can only get four until you start making diamonds or buy diamonds from someone. So that's generally going to be where you hit a wall unless you start mining diamonds pretty early on. So we'll have that set to diamonds. And I think that's about it for this episode of the walkthrough. In the next one, we'll pick up pretty much where I left off on this mission screen, building supercomputer, university, getting into educated workers, and all that. And in another episode, I'll try and cover more of the detailed stuff, like what loss from transit and all of these other things are. But that does it for this video. I'll see you next time.